All right. Hey guys. Oh. All right. Hey guys, this is Stephanie. Oh. Hey guys, this is Stephanie Pickard. Today we're going to go over three lead guitar techniques. Um, as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash guitar control. I uh, will have a special discount code for you for hanging out with me today. Let me know if you can see me on Facebook and on YouTube, and we'll get started. So, um, yes, this is going to be really cool. This is going to be a lot of fun. And also, if you are subscribing to our YouTube channel, remember we do have free videos up every day, um, at least one or two, so make sure you check them out. And um, subscribe to us and click that bell, and you'll get a notification. So it's me and tons of other teachers on there um, from anything from techniques to videos like this to taking requests. So also, if you have requests, make sure you leave those too. Uh, we don't normally do these on Saturdays, so thanks for tuning in, um, and it should be a lot of fun. So I'm just going to make sure you can see me. I think you can. Cool. All right. You can see Facebook. Cool. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Guarv. And hi, GT Dad. Yeah, great to see you guys, too. So thank you for hanging out. Um, so cool. All right. I chose a few techniques. You can ask me questions on other lead techniques too. Um, my favorite is speed picking, and I've said that a lot. So if you hung out here before, you probably heard me say that before. Um, my favorite is speed picking. Hey, Tony. Um, and then I wanted to talk about vibrato and slides, and if we have time, some taps and sweeps maybe. So I'll do about 30 minutes of just lesson, and then we'll do a Q&A. So feel free to ask me questions too. All right, so for speed picking, and if you want a more in-depth lesson on just speed picking, I do have a video up on Guitar Control, so their YouTube channel, Just Speed Picking. So I think it's called like Five Speed Picking Tips with Stephanie Pickard. So make sure you check that out. But I like speed picking a lot um, because for me, it's when you're writing a solo, you are kind of telling a story, and it's the exciting part, like the climax. It doesn't always have to be, but it can be. And it's just kind of a cool thing to throw in, and it can make things kind of special. You don't want to overuse it, though, because... Um, yeah, I don't know, it's just, it can be a bit much too. So it is cool, but you don't want to do it all the time. To speed pick, I uh, just take a shape or a scale or a pattern that I like and I just apply it. You can use it as a transition or something else, but to build up speed picking, if you're new to speed picking, um, I would start by playing whatever you want to play slow and making sure that you really understand what you're playing. So if your lick is, just slow it down. Um, I obviously did more than just that, but take whatever you're doing and change it up. Um, whatever you're going to do. Sometimes, now that I've done it for so long, I don't always actually even think about what I'm doing anymore, which is kind of cool, but um, you also have to figure it out when you're doing it. Uh, what about holding the pick without losing grip? Um, it depends on what pick you're using. I don't have that problem, but maybe if, I don't know, if your hands get like sweaty or something, they do make picks that have grip on them. I mean, mine are kind of chalky, so that's probably helping me too. But um, just have a good grip on the pick. I kind of try to relate it to holding a pen. If you don't, if it's, you know, a lot of instructional books and stuff act like, you know, pretend like you're holding an egg or something, kind of curve your hand, place your pick down, and then wrap your thumb down. But that's really unnatural. It's a good start. Um, but then I just adjust it like a pen. So just like I'm going to write my name, just like that. And I always have my thumb 
Let's see if you can really see it. I always have my thumb just right over that curved part. And then also for speed picking and, and any picking in general, don't put your, your pick too far behind the string. Um, just it takes up time and it doesn't help at all. The feed is lagging. Uh, hey Tony, if you're on Facebook, it just seems to happen. I'm actually streaming directly through a program to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So I, I seem to have that problem on um, on Facebook. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Hi Ray. So cool. I pronounced your name right? That's awesome. Guarf? I did not think I did. So that's really cool. <laughs> All right, so speed picking, uh, slow to fast, that would be my thing, and just find the shape that you want to do and then apply it to it. So even, you know, you can apply it in a lot of different ways. You can tremolo pick or do a bunch of different things to lines that maybe that makes it more exciting. Like... And that was an exciting line, but that's a way to apply, you know, tremolo picking anything, or just speed picking I like to use as my shape. And then I'll throw in other notes, like, uh, let's see, I'm going to throw in a tap. So I just but um, it's just something that I think is really fun. So if you have any questions about that technique, you can ask me, but I do have that more in-depth video on our YouTube channel, so make sure you check that out. So because we've talked about that a bunch, I'm just going to go over some other topics that we don't talk about that much. So vibrato. I think vibrato is the most important topic um, because to me, no matter how good you are, if you don't end on a note with some kind of killer vibrato, it just kind of kills the mood. It just doesn't make your solo, it doesn't make you sound as good as you are. So it can be doing a disservice to yourself to not have good vibrato. And um, it's just really the one thing that we get that really, it puts our own voice on the guitar. So a lot of things don't, but vibrato does. So that's how we make the guitar sing and how you know, we aren't getting taken over by MIDI instruments yet, which is cool. Um, but that's really how you put your own voice and own vocal technique to that. So, uh, let's see. I hope you guys can see me on YouTube. My stream health is not awesome, so let me know if you can. But vibrato could be anything from, you know, Ben's, but what I'm talking about, hey, Mr. Pirate Brain. What, what's your real name? I should stop calling you that. Um, that's your username. But vibrato. Let's see. I'm gonna put that so you can see me. So I'll angle this down a little bit. So vibrato to me, the one I'm talking about, but both um, apply in both. I'm both I'm actually talking about is landing on a note. So I like pinch harmonics too a lot. Like. So just the way that I'm attacking these notes and the way that I'm ending on it, I'm really trying to think as a vocalist almost and make the guitar sing and just bend it slightly instead of having just... I mean, that's kind of cool sounding, but you don't want to... I, I think it's a big difference to have that killer vibrato at the end. So just a... And try to listen to guitar players that you really like and see whose vibrato you like and try to imitate it. That's also a really good lesson is using your ear. We talked about ear training this week. Is using your ear to listen to other people and think, how did they get that noise? Like, did, did it slightly touch their finger? Did the pick slightly touch their finger and, and they got kind of a pinch harmonic feel? Did they have really fat vibrato or really slow vibrato or really fast vibrato? And try to emulate those other players that you're hearing. Um, and then mix and match and make it your own. I think that's the best... Uh, advice. <laughs> oh, thank you. Did you send me two dollars? <laughs> All right. Um, that's where I've never seen that comment before on YouTube. Um, thank you. Oh, hi, David. So, um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Sorry, that was distracting. Uh, yes, I think it really, really makes us stand out. Hi, Nick from New Jersey. That's cool. Um, thank you, Matt. So yes, I think vibrato is a huge deal. And um, for me, even, um, you know, when I was going to school and stuff, my teacher approached me and was saying, as a female, especially, you're gonna have people like pick on certain things about your playing. And if you don't have good vibrato, you're like done. 
And so vibrato to me was a thing that I really, really wanted to have good vibrato. And I worked really hard on it and I would say, and I mean, it's just personal preference though. Uh, some people might not like that vibrato and that's fine. So you just have to find your own vibrato, but have some way to really make the guitar sound like it's singing. I think people that are really good at doing this are like Steve Vai. Um, the guitar definitely sounds like it's singing. Paul Gilbert is really good at it, but there's also people like Pink Floyd and all these, you know, guitar players that just have so much feel and they're really making the guitar sound like almost a vocalist. Thank you. That's cool. But yes, that's what I would say. Um, Guarves asked me, what strings am I using? Um, I'm using some GHS strings today. Uh, gauge I'm using are 10s. I'm always using 10s. I used to use 9s, but I know that um, some people are against it because you do, you can tend to lose some tone. So I use 10s because I'm right in the middle. Um, it's not too thick or anything, but if I do drop a tuning, I drop or I go up a string gauge. So it depends on how metal I'm getting that day. But right now I'm just in standard and I'm using 10s. And always just having control, which is also something that has to do with vibrato and what we're talking about, is really having control over the string. So like... It's not going crazy, right? And sometimes even though your hand looks like it's moving really fast, the vibrato, the frequencies aren't going that crazy. So that's kind of kind of cool too. Um, I also like, you know, the pinch harmonics. And sometimes mixing those. And then the other term, when you also hear people say vibrato, they are also talking about sometimes bending. So uh, to bend a string. <laughs> That's also can be called vibrato too, and you want to put good vibrato on those bends um, and just bend them up and have a lot of feel and a lot of control. And so make it, you can even practice this by singing a line and then trying to emulate what you're singing. So sometimes that's a really cool way to even write a solo. <laughs> You can see how there's a lot of different ways to express vibrato on the guitar and kind of make the guitar have its own voice. So I think that's a really important thing to kind of get used to and kind of try to put your own spin on, I would say. Uh, let's see. BB King is cool. I can't get my finger. Um, okay. So BCL Max is asking about getting your fingers on to make a bar chord. So my best advice is whenever you're playing guitar, I've talked about this a little bit before too, is that I had a really bad wrist injury where um, I was told I was never going to play guitar again and it was awful and horrible, but it has a happy ending, so that's cool. But um, really the way that you approach the guitar, it shouldn't look uncomfortable. Nothing should look crazy. So when you are playing a bar chord, my wrist isn't like insane looking. My arm is all just in a line. And so that's how you want to be. Everything should be relaxed, shoulders down. You need to treat yourself kind of like an athlete. You don't need to be crazy about anything, but you do need to be aware. You need to be thinking, okay, I'm like going like this and that doesn't look right. It looks painful. So if it looks painful and it's hurting, it's not right. So my biggest advice on anything like that, anything, even a solo, if you're having trouble reaching some certain note, is paying attention to your thumb placement on the back of the neck. So this is a huge deal. And it sounds really simple, and it is, but it's something that I think we overlook a lot. And subconsciously, we're not thinking about it. Eventually, you will be. Like, I don't think about it anymore. But depending on where your thumb is, like, if you have your thumb way up here, of course you're not going to be able to flatten that out. I mean, look at my arm. It doesn't look right. So lowering that thumb to the very back of the neck. Oops. There we go. So like the middle of the neck, thumb up, just like a thumbs up, the back of the neck, and then I just kind of have my wrist. It's still bent a little bit because it has to be, but it's pretty natural looking. So just like that. So I would say move your thumb down on the back of the neck if you're having trouble making those bar chords. All right. I used to use sweet chest. I got ring ball now. Um... All right, some string preferences. I like a lot of different strings, but uh, let's see. Thanks, of course, Tim. Oh, oh, a lot of people are talking about Greg Allman passing, um, and just sending good vibes. 
He's one of my dad's favorite guitar players. It's very sad. All right. Um, that would be some cool lessons too, some Almond Brothers lessons. If you guys have any of your favorite Almond Brothers songs that you want to leave comments on. So I've talked about that before too. If there's topics when you're watching these at, that you would love to hear, these are topics that are coming from you guys. So if you if there's something that you really want to hear, go ahead and leave a comment and maybe it'll end up in one of these live streams with me or on a video on our YouTube with me or somebody else. But make sure you check those out. How do you get good vibrato at the top of your bend? That's a really good question. And it's really hard. I think that's a really hard thing to do on the guitar, actually. Um, it just takes a lot of a lot of practice. Uh, thank you, Gary. Um, it just takes a lot of practice. So when you're bending, you just have to kind of... Let's bear with me, because it... Let's see if I can do it sounding good on my first shot. So I think it is hard, but you're bending it. And then you're just kind of supporting it. So I actually have my thumb wrap... It always reminds me of ACDC. Do, 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 do. I forget what it is. Whatever that lick is, I forget what it is off the top of my head. So it can be anything. That one didn't sound that good. But it can be um, same concept. So you're bending up, but you're just kind of wiggling it right around. I don't do that that much in my playing, but it is really cool. It's something that's very bluesy, and um, it's also another cool thing to add. Add Like, you want all these techniques and things to be colors that you add to your playing and your voice. So they're all little tricks that you can throw on there and good skills to have. And the more and more you do this, you can totally... Um, Oh, sorry. The more and more that you do this, you have more things to kind of color your solos and change things. And I think it's cool to mix them around too. That's awesome. Oh, whoops. I did mean, yeah, sorry. Uh, cool. Learning to slide. Oh, let's see. So let's see. Learning to slide. Sliding is also a really, really cool thing that I like to do. Um, oh. Uh, sliding is also something that I really like to. Let's see. Writing about Greg Allman. It did happen today. Um, so that's really sad. I'm finding out through you guys, actually. Um, that is really sad. It's a big bummer. So when I'm talking about slide, I'm not actually talking about a slide guitar, like country slide or blues slide. I'm talking about just sliding on the guitar. Um, I remember I had a really good, I had a really cool teacher that was um, a really good guitar player. Uh, he played in Racer X for a while with Paul Gilbert. And he, um, I remember I brought him a lick that I wrote and I had added in a bunch of slides and he was saying, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I never see people do that. Um, even though it sounds silly because I'm sure you've heard people do slides, but just the way that I was doing it, he was saying, I haven't really heard anyone do that. That's your thing. You need to go with this. And so I always try to bring this up in lessons that I'm giving or tips that I'm giving too, because, um, you know, we're all, I've talked about this before too, about that control secrets that I'm going to give you guys a discount to. And it's all about playing from your heart and learning, like playing from your own head, like what you want to express and what you want to get out. And so whenever you're trying to make up your own sound, you know, you have learned a lot from other people. And it's okay to like certain things about other guitar players and blend it into your own, but you don't want to sound just like them. So it's cool to have all these different colors and techniques that we can throw in and kind of make things our own. So when I was messing around with stuff, I don't know if, if I was going to do a slide like I just like that. And he, I, just little things like that. He was saying that's really cool that you're kind of looking horizontally and taking these licks and going looking at scales this way and also you know this way but just kind of putting your own spin on stuff so if you're super new to guitar and you've never done a slide uh, all that we're doing is placing down a finger not lifting up because we want to have that sustain and we're acting as if someone pushed us to the next note so it's one attack and it's two different notes so i'm picking i'm on the second uh string fifth fret i'm picking and sliding to the eighth Sorry, I keep looking. There's a crazy storm going on outside. So hopefully everything's going to be okay. But um, hopefully you guys aren't in it too. So I'm picking and sliding. And then you can kind of slide around wherever you want. So and there's a lot of cool ways to do that. I've seen people kind of do these really fast ones where... 
and, you know, just adding cool techniques and stuff. Um, and that was just on the second string, 12 to 13, one finger. Oh, sorry. And the cool thing about slides is having a lot of control because the first time I did that, I kind of slid pretty far. So you don't want to do that. You want to go exactly where you're supposed to go. go. So it's being really accurate. So whether it's there or or just a line. But all these things are adding different colors and different techniques. Like the same line sounds different when I go. Right, so that's three different techniques. Picking it, sliding it, and then hammer on block. Oh, it. So that's why it's kind of cool to bring in some of these things that you haven't done before. All right, let me check in on you guys really quick. And again, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. So go to www.youtube.com slash guitar control. And I think the storm is definitely coming. So we are almost done. I hope we make it through. Um, I'm in Nashville. I don't know how many of you are either. Yep. <laughs> I think Andy said that too. Yep, so hopefully it's okay. Um, I'll let you guys know if you see me next Tuesday. Um, always sunny in SoCal. That's where I moved from. I know. This is not Southern California weather. All right. So for hanging out with me today, thank you guys. I know it's kind of random on a Saturday. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, there's actually a lot more of you available on Saturday than I thought there would be. So you guys are practicing. That's cool. So I'm going to drop this in to Facebook first. This is for our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. So this is a lot about the topics I, the, a lot of the topics that I is a really good blend of. So I want to pin this to the top for Facebook and talk to you a little bit about it. It's Killer Guitar Control Secrets. It's all about playing from your heart. So getting what's in your head out of your fingertips. And this is something that we really don't get to address that much and isn't talked about a lot. So for this one, um, it's just a cool approach on how to play like you. So, you know, a lot of times you want to learn a specific song, but this is how to have your own voice on the guitar. So go ahead and check this out. It's going to go over techniques, which are what I did a lot today. Just me picking stuff. You know, hammer on balls. Bending. Vibrato. All of those are techniques. Sliding. Tapping. All techniques. Fretboard knowledge, uh, your chords, your scales, your arpeggios, all of that. And then hand-brain connection. So getting what's in your head out of your hands. So this is for you guys that want to sound, that, like have a mission and a goal and have this voice in your head that you want to get out. So this is all a unique approach about how to play like the best of you. So, you know, how to Eric Clapton become Eric Clapton kind of thing. So make sure you check this out. And if you do get it, make sure you use my code so that you get a discount. All right. And again, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you get those free videos there too. Um, I, of course, Seth, that's awesome. Thank you guys again. You know, a lot of you tune in every week and every time that I do these. So it's really cool to see you guys every week. A few times every week. I'll be back on Tuesday too. And Thursday. Um, do you know a guitar? I do not know that guitarist in Nashville. My fiance and I moved here, um, just like five or six months ago. So I haven't been here too, too long. Um, Gary's asking, does that DVD apply to acoustic? It's more of a concept, so it applies to everything. It's just getting what's in your head out of your hands. Judas Priest would be cool. I did a Judas Priest video, so Tony, if you go to our YouTube, again, youtube.com slash guitar control, um, I have at least a couple Judas Priest songs, so make sure you check those out. I'm pretty sure I'm Breaking the Law and something else, so make sure you check those out, but those are a lot of fun. Um, and again, if you go to our YouTube, there's sections, like there's playlists of just me or just Robert or just John, um, and even just topics and other teachers too, and John. And, um, so if you go and check those out, there are topics, like these are rock lessons, these are technique lessons, so check that out. Um, all free and all there. And go ahead and check out our YouTube, or our website, guitarcontrol.com. Um, let's see how we're doing on time. So we have like six minutes. So... Are there any techniques that you guys have questions on? Um, let's see. If there's any techniques that you guys have questions on, feel free to ask me. I think YouTube might have a better chance because it comes in faster. Of course, Barb. Oh, that's really sad. 
When using a glass slide, which finger is best? I prefer my ring finger. I don't know why. Or I guess my index. Let me think about it. <laughs> I would say I would prefer, not my pinky, but it's probably smarter because then you have those fingers available. I would say if you can do your pinky, probably your pinky, but pinkies are typically everyone's weakest finger. Um, I like them a lot more now than I used to because I worked at it. But I would say if I was just going to grab one, I don't do a ton of stuff, but I would use my pointer and my ring finger. Um, do they only give me half an hour to go live? They put, well... I think if I wanted to do like two hours, they would let me. But um, the deal is about 30 minutes and then a 15 minute Q&A. But if you guys want it to change, leave comments and let them know. But it is a lot of fun, so it's cool. Pick control, so holding your pick. So um, Tony's asking about pick control. So I would say having a good grip on your pick, again, holding it kind of like a pen. Uh, I never have mine angled backwards I used to so when I had that big wrist injury and stuff I didn't have good technique and I was picking kind of like this like a crab kind of like Marty Freeman does that but he's not injured and he's doing awesome so if you can do that more power to you but I think most people can't so um, the best way that I can advise anybody else to not get injured too is to have your arm directly in an angle so just an angle everything's in a line including my pick the direction of my pick is like I know it's really hard with the camera but it's also going like this so everything is going in a line, diagonally. Uh, then it's not far behind. Other than that, if it's not going like at this angle, then flat. But don't do this. It's just not that healthy. But you know, keeping your pick close to the end of the string so that you're not lagging on time. I've talked about this before too. Is you'll see swimmers, you know, they have swim caps, they have all these things to cut time and make everything as easy as possible. I like to think about that for a guitar too. You know, if you're way behind the string obviously it's taking a lot more effort when you push through and come back right and it's unnecessary so why do it if you don't need to do it so keeping your keeping your hand like close here not far behind it's going to be like that um is a lot easier and instead of pick control i guess you would mean um how to keep your hands in sync with one another so i would slow things down Play them faster, test yourself, and then build things up. That's what I would do. All right, let me check in on you guys. We have three minutes. Pinch harmonics. I love pinch harmonics. I'm sure you can tell I use them like every three seconds. Um, you're welcome, Ronnie. Um, I did do some. So Guar was asking about acoustic guitars. I did do some. So I've done it a couple times, and you guys have been asking, which is cool. <laughs> Thank you, GT Dad. Leave that comment on the regular channel. <laughs> Um, so he's asking about acoustic guitar. I do do acoustic guitar. I've done some vocal ones too. Uh, you should strum. I know some people do say a circular motion. I think what they're talking about is kind of having your arm in rhythm. So I know for me, a lot of blues and stuff, they were talking about circular motion, kind of meaning you're going up and down or down and up and down and up. And then it's mostly utilizing your downs and ups because the idea of all that is you're going down you're obviously coming up so how do you utilize that and a lot of people that get really locked in with me uh what's the most important lead guitar learning scale or ear training um i i think a combo is really important but i would say your ear will probably get if you could only have one your ear would probably be better for you but scales are like a road map and your ear is like your lifesaver so that's what i would say uh marlena all right, so I didn't answer pinch harmonics. Sorry, David. Pinch harmonics, um, what's actually happening is when you do them, when you get that noise, you're really, really choked up on your pick. Extremely. Metallica, please. Yes, please. I would like to do that, too. I love Metallica. So you're extremely choked up on your pick. So the point where you're flush, like you're, that means you're exactly even. So it's hitting your, your pick and your finger at the same time. And that's what actually makes that noise. So the coolest thing is when you get really good at them is being able to kind of go back and forth, like choke up and not choke up and just kind of doing it naturally. But it is a weird thing to teach. So how I was taught was go in a room and mess around, choked up on your pick until it makes sense. Because the coolest thing too is the Savannah thing. 
they're different when you hit them in different spots. So depending on how nerdy and crazy you want to get, uh, you can really learn where you're hitting the sounds. And so there's that, but a majority of listeners and everything aren't really going to tell. You know, just like a lot of the listeners, when I was saying don't overabuse speed picking or things like that, because the majority of listeners aren't going to be able to tell these two different speed picking techniques apart. They're just going to say that that was a fast lick, just like the other one was a fast lick. So um, that's why your writing should really be melodic and have other things that grasp people's attention and are memorable. But pinch harmonics, choke up, flush, and then that's how you get that sound. So it's hitting both the same time. And listen to a lot of Zach Wilde. That's what I did. That's my best advice for that. All right, let's see how we're doing. So I think it's time for our q and I'm going to throw that DVD in one more time because I know it takes a second for these comments to come through. So I'm going to leave that for you guys one more time. Again, this is Killer Guitar Control Secrets, all about playing from your heart. So getting what's in your head out of your hands. So again, this is for the person that wants to be their own artist. Like you want your own voice. You want to know how, like, how did Jimi Hendrix become Jimi Hendrix? How did Jimmy Page become Jimmy Page? How did Randy Rhodes become Randy Rhodes? This is all about learning how to get the voice in your head out of your hands, going over three major topics, technique, fretboard knowledge, and hand brain connection. So that's um, a great DVD, and here is your code for hanging out. So thank you guys, and if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash guitar control. All right, let's see. What is more important? Important. Um, what made me decide to go heavy metal? Um, that is a funny question. I was um, super not into metal. I was all about singing. And um, I mean, when I very first started out, I liked all like the R&B girl singers and stuff. And then I, my dad, when I was a teenager, just suggested I learn a couple chords. And I, because uh, I was writing vocals and I was writing poetry, <laughs> and I started playing guitar and I just absolutely fell in love with it and I quit everything that I was doing and that's all that I did and I progressed really quickly um and the artists that I was listening to and the difficulty I guess that they were you know I jumped from like I liked like pop punk and then all of a sudden when I actually started playing I realized I liked more bluesy um classic rock you know my dad was a big influence with me with that because he would show me Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin and all these really cool guitar heroes, and I really loved that. And then in high school, I was friends with all the metalheads, and they showed me Children of Bodom and all those guys, Metallica, Megadeth, and everybody, and I just thought that was so cool and loved the challenge of metal and Dream Theater and everybody. And then after that, I got into all the shredders, and that's what I really ended up liking and falling into. But now I like every, just about everything. Um, and I think that's a cool mentality to have because for me, that really helped me by um, learning to be inspired by more and more things. And then you can mix and match them like we were talking earlier and create something totally different. So it's good to have a mentality. I know especially in metal in some genres, it becomes cool to like criticize or compare or think things aren't cool. But the coolest thing that ever happened to me was just having a really open mind and you know being like oh that was so cool in that pop song or how did that country guy do that and then take it into whatever your comfort zone is and you have something totally different so that that can be really cool and playing with other people I've talked about that before too I play a lot with my fiance and we have uh we're both metal but like a different kind of approach and sometimes that can really push me to do something way better because sometimes you might fall into your own typical lead that you write or typical sound and then when you have someone that sounds completely different, that can really boost whatever you're doing and kind of raise the bar for you. And I think that's important too, because, you know, if you're only playing like by yourself, I don't know, it's like not having someone to call you on things in life. It's good to have someone, whether it's your partner or your family or somebody that, or your best friend that calls you like on whatever you're doing, if you're not being cool. It's also really cool to have that in music. You know, because if you're stuck doing your own thing, you're always going to think it's cool or whatever. But if you play with somebody that's totally different and maybe better at one thing than you are, you're going to raise the bar and you're going to find out how to get better or you're going to create something totally new. I think that's a really cool approach. I find for me, I like slow, like David Gilmore. That's also very cool. I like David Gilmore too. Let me check in on you, please. Um, okay. So for the people that leave comments, like... Illis, you're not going to be in these chats anymore. That's completely disrespectful.
and like weird. I've done videos, so go look at them. I'm assigned a topic, so you can listen to this topic or you can go somewhere else. But you can't talk to me or anybody like that. Um, yes, you must learn control. I met Ingve Malmsteen when I lived in Miami, Florida. That's cool. I think that's very cool. Now his son is like a killer guitar player too, which is very cool. Um, but yeah. Let's see. So yeah, thank you guys. Um, I will be back on Tuesday. I'll hang out for a couple more minutes and then I'll see you guys on Tuesday. And um, thank you for all the people that make this a lot of fun. Um, I know that some of you always ask why there's talking and it's because it's a lesson. <laughs> so I don't know if some people have never done a guitar lesson before, but that's what happens in them. All right, and if you're saying really bad. So, um, yeah. Thank you guys, of course. Leave comments. Um, let's see. Sorry, Facebook is scrolling. So, yes. I'm going to get rid of this guy really quick. Um, yes. Let's see. A little something from Priest. Will this video be posted? Not by my gear. I'm not sure, Chris, what that question means. Um, I think you're asking if you can see this video elsewhere. And you can. So after this, this video will show up um, on our Facebook or on our YouTube. So make sure that you check that out. Um, and then you can see it there. So cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Let's see. Steve Miller, I do like Steve Miller. Of course. David, I think you said your name is David. I should check my name. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for checking in. I really appreciate that. Yep, it's David. All right. Um, okay, cool, guys. I will be back on Tuesday with another topic. So thank you so much. If you haven't already, please check out our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. This is my discount code for you guys for hanging out with me. So I really appreciate it. And again, it's so cool to see the same people coming back every time. Um, that's awesome. And so thank you for sending all your suggestions and all your lessons. And please make sure that you check out our YouTube channel. It would be cool to do some Judas Priest. So all the people sending in topics, um, why I said that someone was rude is because they told me to shut up and play Metallica, which is really rude and not how you treat people. But um, I don't get to choose the topics. So when you send these in, they do approach me and I get to kind of do them, but these are all topics directly from you guys. So I'm doing whatever is sent my way. So make sure that you make yourself heard and you throw in um, what you guys really want because we are listening to you guys and they will show up in these live streams or they will show up in videos. So make sure you check them out. I don't think Pickard is your last name. I think it's a <laughs> plectrum. Uh, it's not going to be my last name much longer, but it has been a really funny last name to have as a guitar player. Oh, thank you, Dave. That's really cool. Um, but my last name is changing in like um, three months. Uh, yes, Tony. It is very rude. Don't. That's what I was saying. Like, you guys don't want to... When you open yourself up to really being open-minded in life and in music, it's so much better. Um, you know, that same teacher I was telling you guys about, Bruce Boyer from Racer X, his friend was like this crazy studio musician. And he um, was just like, Bruce would describe him as just like the best guitar player. And I always stuck with me that he would tell me, I don't understand, like that guy, a guitar could fall over and he would find beauty in it. And I, that always really stuck with me. And it sounds so hippie and everything, which isn't bad, but it sounds kind of like, Fairy tale ish, I guess. But to me, what that showed me, and also I told you guys I've worked under composers and stuff in the past, um, to me, it really opened me up to new sounds and really kept music exciting for me, and especially guitar. So you take your strong suit, you know, for me, which was guitar, and then you learn all these other things and you can kind of emulate things. Like even in school, I remember there was a guitar player that would always use saxophone as inspiration because it was so different. So everybody else was using guitar players and he was using saxophone. So when he goes up and does his solo, it's totally different and cool and unique. So um, just that's a good mentality to have in life and in, in guitar, as long as that helps. <laughs> you will have to buy guitars. That's true. Can we come to your wedding? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, you should check him out, though. He's a really good guitar player. So Stephen J. Bradley. Um, and hopefully we're supposed to do like a wedding shred video. So I want to put that up soon. It would be a lot of fun. All right. Thank you guys so much for checking this out. I really appreciate you guys hanging out and spending your time with me today. So check out that DVD. There's your discount code. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I will be back on Tuesday at 7.